Welcome to the second episode in the offstage series with myself and Mr. Cameron Leach. Cameron, I think that was one of our better conversations. Um, that actually is one of the better conversations I've had in the podcast overall. I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. So. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. After we got past the uh, the infections and surgeries, we really got into it there. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll see what we're talking about that uh, in that realm. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think I think this offstage thing could be really something special. So I, for one thing, on behalf of both of us, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for following along, and I hope you enjoyed this as much as we did. Or in any case, the offstage series is about kind of hanging out, being offstage in the green room, in the back, on the wings, and just talking, talking about real life stuff, not necessarily just Trumps. So, and I think this episode, this conversation really embodied that kind of mindset. Uh, any, anything for the listeners, Cam, before we get into the episode? No, this is a this is a great one, man. A lot of real stuff there towards the the middle and the end of the conversation. So I hope everybody enjoys and uh, don't take uh, don't take us too seriously if we go down some rabbit holes. You know, we're just exploring some ideas here. So we're just talking, man. We're vibing. All right. Without further ado, here is the second off stage with Cameron Beach. Yeah, I know, I know, and I and I made some I made some video the other day about whiskey samples on the channel, saying like, hey, um, you know, if you send me samples, I'm happy to take them. I can't guarantee that I'll review them because I have like 150 samples now. Yeah. And I was like, I can't guarantee I'll get a video out or do it on a live stream. I'm happy to give you my tasting notes for your samples you sent. And some people just want to share, but then I said, uh. I will not be sending any back because some people have been expecting samples back. And oh. I'm like, I'm going to run out of whiskey if you expect samples back, you know? Yeah. So I put that video up and people are still sending it. So I'm, I'm like, all right, fine. You know, how, I, how do you get around <laughs> shipping alcohol? Well, let's just talk theoretically. Right. This is, of course, if like in a world where we're wanting to ship alcohol i'm just out of curiosity curiosity if you wanted to ship so if you wanted to ship two ounce bottles of essential oils mm. or olive oil in whiskey bottles the way you would do that <laughs> for these <laughs> you, you don't use usps on anything right. um and, and a lot of people make that mistake use fedex or ups it's a little more hazy with the laws of that right. you know a little more uh and and yeah i mean some people use noisemakers in the box so you can't hear the glugging mm. but you gotta for these samples i like shrink wrap the tops of them heavy it, like really tight and then i wrap the whole thing up and then bubble wrap it and throw it in a little box um and then these bottles have these like inflatable shippers that you use they're like a dollar a piece and you you blow them up mm -hmm. and it, it's beautiful i mean all you have to do is like kind of pack some packing paper around it where do you get those uh, so those are like just on amazon oh, they're like okay. they're basically for wine bottles if you like if you buy whiskey or wine and you're going to put it in your suitcase and fly it home i used oh, to just I've wrap that it, before I've, uh, <laughs> i used to just yeah. wrap it in dirty socks and like you know your clothes and shit <laughs> <laughs> but um no there's like these inflatable shippers that you use yeah, so yeah yeah mine the ones i had were like just uh, like bubble bubble wrap lined um uh-huh they weren't inflatable though i want did i show you this hold on i don't see if i can reach uh, maybe not this uh this is a this is not for me this is a gift for somebody else that i'm taking to them but char bay i don't know that it's uh uh hops infused oh hop weird flavored whiskey oh flavored okay interesting yeah um i tried it it it's super interesting um 10 barrel run and fifth release of r5 huh 49 and a half percent 99 proof yeah from uh california 
Okay. So it's pretty good. Yeah. Are you are you sending it to somebody? Or are you are you handing it off? Well, I was supposed to send it to somebody. I just didn't know how. Yeah. Yeah. I'll. I can. I can show you my system. <laughs> the Pablo Escobar. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny man it, like you know these things are flying all around but yeah I've, I've never been i've never had any questions asked when i'm sending any of this stuff you know the That's local good. fedex would see me come in a bunch and you know people are sending people bottles all the time yeah it's like and some people are selling them you know illegally and i don't even think that should be a problem to be honest with you like it's not just, prohibition anymore fellers it's it's all tax dollars that's the only reason why it's illegal is yeah tax dollars but i don't know man but yeah um got some more samples should be coming today so what have, uh what's been going on that you've been hanging yeah. out or what yeah um what day is it tuesday so when's the last time we we did one of these last was, week was it last week yeah um i'm trying to think about what's Oh yeah, because I I we we got together on Wednesday, and I did a master class that night, which was oh how'd that go? It was hilarious. I mean, it was it was literally just a therapy session, like the like <laughs> yeah, you the guy that said it was probably gonna be like that. Yeah, and we just we just like talked, and it, it was super low key, and it was good for me. I, I didn't you know I didn't have to play or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, man. And then this weekend I got a call for like a bunch of gigs, like really, yeah, it's pretty weird, like a bunch of orchestra work. I talked to some band directors in Ohio and outside of Ohio about doing stuff with them. Like it was a very weird weekend with all this work possibly, you know, coming my way. And then, yeah, it's been a good week. Like th this week I started um, exercising again and, and kind of getting my shit together. So, what have you been doing, running? Insanity. Oh, so, okay. The, the video stuff. I used to do that every day when I was in college um, in my undergrad. And it was it was really good for me, and and now I've, well, I, I'm I wanted to talk about some stuff today, just about discipline, you know. But yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> it's been a it's been one of these things where I realize like I need to um, I need to set an attainable goal for myself that I can check off because yeah. like usually when I go and do, I have a gym membership. And when I go and lift, I just kind of have an outline in my head, but it's like sometimes I'll say I want to do three sets of eight. And then I'm like, oh, I'll just do a fourth set, you know? And yeah. so you, you're always kind of changing it up. And I was like, let me just do Insanity front to back 100% and check it off my list in 60 days and say, like, I did that, you know? Because yeah. I, I need to I need to accomplish something tangible right now <laughs> instead well, of floating in outer space. <laughs> I'm kind of going through that right now with, um, with my running uh -huh. uh, because – I'm not, I have never been a good runner ever. Uh, when I was playing sports, I was more of the short distance kind of like, and baseball doesn't involve a ton of running except when you're running around the bases. So, um, or if you're playing outfield, but it's, it's kind of like distance running for me has always been uh, this, not necessarily a, uh, what do you call it? Not, not necessarily like a Moby Dick of like, kind of like, like a, like a task but at the same time um i did want to kind of get better at it because a it makes you feel pretty good especially mm -hmm. when you get to a point where you get to a runner's high and all that kind of stuff but um this is always something one of those athletic feats i've always wanted to do um i have this like strange kind of hybrid mindset of like i'm an artist but also i i'm like god i, I kind of want to run I kind of want to run really fast today. Like, it's just kind of weird. I don't know. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, with running, I, I had to realize how bad I was at it because I everybody's just like, well, the key is to not stop. I'm like, okay, but, like, I don't know what not stopping feel Like, you know, that there's a lot of it that's very unfamiliar, to be honest with you. But then there was, like, one day where I ran, like, four miles, and I was like, what the heck just happened? How did I do that? And it's all it's uh -huh. all kind of like a – I think running takes a lot of discipline more so than uh, more so than lifting. I know lifting, you have to get in there and you have to be careful with, you know, weight choices and exercises and stuff like that and making sure you're building up the right muscles in, in the right order. But um, running is a different animal, man. I had to mm -hmm. like, I, it is, 
it is definitely winning in my life. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I don't know. I, I have a harder time getting into the gym and sticking to a weightlifting thing. But I feel like it for me, it's just an access thing, like driving to the gym, you know, you, you got to like, you have to set the, the time aside, whereas running, you could just kind of pick up and go outside for me. And that's like, okay, I can go run mm. now. Mm. Um, but I, th- my biggest issue with running, every time I try to get back into it, I have really bad shin splints. And that has always been a thing for me from high school when I played lacrosse. So I decided, like, what I'll usually do is I'll go out, I'll do a couple runs, I'll get start getting in the gym, my shin splints get so bad that I like can hardly walk. Yeah. <laughs> and and then I'm like, oh crap, so I'll stop running and let me just start doing like for instance insanity, but I start that by the time that I'm my legs are just chewed up in a, in a mess. So I decided this time let's start with insanity. Maybe I'll try to get back into running later, but you know, I I don't know. And and running for me is not tan not a tangible goal. It's not like I just keep running until I'm like, okay, it's been a couple miles, four miles. I'm gonna stop now. I'm tired, you know. The as, as a opposed... lot of running, though. Yeah, so you're probably. I mean, used to it. I was always athletic. The one thing that's been good for me is when I get back into being active. I go through phases. It comes back very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, like within a week, I can go out and run four to six miles, you know. Uh, but I don't know. That, I, I haven't stuck with it in a long time. So ever since I was at Eastman, I, I was doing two-a-day workouts there. Were you really? For, yeah, I, dude, I was wow. like, never in my life have I been ripped, except for basically my first semester at Eastman, coming Damn, off of I the summer. Damn, complete opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like in really good shape, and then I got a hernia, and after that wow. surgery, it jacked me up. And, and I was like, um, just so scared of lifting again. Yeah. You know, I, my hernia was above my belly button and that, that surgery going in there, I, I've, I've had a lot of surgeries and a lot of medical issues and I've never had a surgery that put me out like that for some reason. Mm. So I, mean, I don't know, that, man. Did that hurt? I've never had one. Did it hurt like really bad or was it just like, oh, wait. It was just poking out. Like my intestine was just poking out a little bit yeah. um, and I could feel it and I, it was this weird pain that would kind of come and go at different times. But like when it was there, it was hurting, mm. you know, and it, you're always running that risk of just continuing to tear it more and more and more intestines starting to come out. So I was yeah. like, I should just go get this fixed. And uh, yeah, I can't imagine how bad it would hurt if it would have been worse, you know? Yeah, I I know guys that have it's all from lifting. It's all from like deadlifts and like mm-hmm. doing something and like activating that area and everybody's like dude it was brutal yeah a lot of people get that hernia down in their their nether regions you know yeah. and i was i was glad i didn't have that and mine was mine was up here but dude it had to be from like i think i probably started it over that previous summer because i was doing these things like these on these declines where i was doing these sit-ups you know, you put your legs in the thing and, and you're doing sit-ups from like a decline position. Yeah, go all the way back, yeah. But I would strap like two plates to my chest and just do that. Like I, I had two plates. <laughs> like I was I was I was doing a lot of a lot of crazy stuff that summer and uh and then I started doing a lot of squats, a lot of deadlifts, and I could just feel it starting to go. It's like, yeah. oh so I, I put it off as long as I could and then it was like I gotta get this surgery, man. And Man. I've only been put under once and that was for a thumb surgery. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, thumb surgery. I had, I had severed the top tendon. Um, yeah, my hand went Oof. through a window. I never I thought just... I was gonna play again, dude. That's how bad it was. Like that. Wow. I was like 18. I was about to go to my undergrad. So my undergrad started out mm. pretty slow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, dude, I got a gnarly scar too. Um. But that Dang. that's the only time I've been put under. I have never had my wisdom teeth taken out. They came in straight, like um Nice. Nothing. So Yeah. I, You're lucky. <laughs> I guess. And then I th- I had this I have this underlying feeling. Somebody tell me if anybody else feels this way. I have this underlying feeling that one day it's all gonna come crashing down or it's gonna be like <laughs> left and right. Like your time is now. Like, yeah. I can't wait. 
<laughs> it comes in phases. It's like there are times in my life where I'm good, and then there will be like a few month period where I'm at the doctor every other week. You know, yeah. just like something's wrong. Like the wisdom <laughs> teeth, both both sides got infected after the surgery, and then, do they would abscess one like once every couple of days when I was in my senior year of high school? They would abscess. My cheeks would fill up, and then it would explode in, in my mouth, and I would have to drain my mouth out into a trash can. I mean, some gnarly shit. It was. It Jesus was Christ, heavy. Dude, I'm cutting this <laughs> so off they had to go, they had to go back in. <laughs> I know they had to go back in and like dig out all the infection basically from those sockets. Oh, I'm telling you, like that was bad. You know, that was that was maybe one of the worst. Like, <laughs> yeah, it makes you sick to your stomach. <laughs> you're like, where did all this come from? Like, your mouth keeps filling up. You're like, I don't know how. And you're just like standing over a trash can. I would just squeeze my cheeks, and it would just shoot out of my mouth. What the hell, dude? Oh my god! I'm never getting my wisdom teeth taken out. Never. Yeah, I, I messed that one up. Apparently, dude. It's, what did you do? Cause like, cause I think I just like I ate a couple of solid foods, maybe a little too early, and and like little itty bitty things got down in there, and that's mm. all it takes. You know. Oh my god, dude. That's horrific. Yeah. Of course. It that's. Was, I mean, I've heard yeah. of horror stories like that. I mean, my brother, my brother when he was a kid uh had to have excess gum removed and the anesthesia had a reverse effect so it mm -hmm. actually made him more alert and more awake and so dude he's like six years old he felt every bit of that laser cut and like that that was a horrific uh, sound hearing him uh, just, and like he's like a little six-year-old kid he's like yeah dude anesthesia doesn't work on you sorry I'm like uh, e like like an evil villain <laughs> like <you know? laughs> and uh oh so yeah he's a little traumatized from that i think but there's a thing when you go into surgeries so then i don't want to get into the weeds this, this could be a whole this could be a whole story um which one maybe one day i'll tell on one of these episodes but anyways um i don't like to feel out of my out of my mind really like for instance like like marijuana you know like i just it's never been my, my thing Neither um me, actually i've it never done it's never did anything for me, actually. Yeah. Like, I, I did it a few times when I was younger, um, when I was really young, you know, like in high school, like 15, 16 years old. Um, and then I had an experience that happened again, and that's where kind of it goes off the rails, and, and that could be a whole other story. But <laughs> it's it's actually kind of interesting with, with psych, psychological issues and mental health type stuff. Right. Um, but, but then moving forward, I never like to feel out of my mind. Now, drinking is a different thing. It took me a long time to be able to like drink and get drunk basically after all this happened, but because of like just anxiety about it and, and stuff like this, but um, that's fine now, but like still like marijuana is not for me. But when you go in and, and you go to have a surgery, they give you like some loopy medicine up front before they knock you out. Yeah. And, and you're kind of in the bed like, oh, you know, acting like an idiot. And then they bring you into the room and you, and you kind of don't really remember that whole scene. Mm -hmm. And they, and I told them like, I don't want any of that. Like, please don't give me that. Like whenever I do surgeries now, I just tell them like, I want to see everything. I want to be completely aware until the, the lights go out. Yep. And so like, there was this crazy moment during that hernia surgery where I was like in the room, they're wheeling me into the OR. And then there's like eight people. They all put their hands under you and transfer you into a different bed onto the I table. I remember this. And like being fully aware and having just all these hands on you, it was like it was like a scary movie, you know. And then you're like kind of laying there, and it was kind of funny, but kind of terrifying. Yeah. Because I just wanted to be very lucid, and then and then you know, they finally they're like cracking jokes at you because they know that you're still very coherent. So I'm like talking to them, cracking jokes, and then it's just like you know the lights go out. But Bruh. very interesting to kind of see to see that because I think in my previous surgeries I had gotten the loopy meds beforehand. Yeah. I, I remember I remember that sequence. Um, I remember being I remember them laying my hand on the operating table, but mm -hmm. then as shortly after, well, I remember being wheeled down there. I remember being transferred to the table, and I was fully aware. And then having my hand put on the operating table, and then I was out. Yeah. So it was. I I I wasn't as coherent in the, in the fact of like being, like I'm about to get operated on, on like what the hell, but. Um, I definitely remember everything about that. I was, I was like, 
I, I feel like I felt the coldness of the operating mm. table or tray or whatever it was because it's a hand surgery. And I, I was like, whoa, and then done. Yeah. Like, <laughs> There's crazy. like a sense of impending doom yes. for me when, when you're going to get a surgery. It's just like there's that small chance that you're not you're just not going to wake up. Yeah, you know, and, and no matter the what it is, IV, the IV getting put in you and stuff. And you're like, God, I feel like I'm sick, but I'm not I'm like, you know, it's, yeah, it's very strange. I man, there's probably so many other things wrong with me from kid, like being a kid and getting hurt and stuff like that, that I just, <laughs> I truthfully do not want to deal with surgically. Like, uh, -huh. like I, I have, I'm fairly certain I have like something torn in my shoulder yeah um from an injury uh as a kid i think it was skateboarding and um i'm afraid to go get it looked at because i'm like they're like yeah you, we need to rebuild the whole thing like and i'm like <laughs> wait a second um yeah that yeah. impending doom feeling is something i absolutely hate i can't stand yeah. it and that's the one thing too that i'm with you on the getting high stuff like like i got friends that mm -hmm. use it for way more you know probably more useful reasons actually like anxiety like it helps their anxiety or stomach issues or whatever allows them to eat mm -hmm. uh pain management uh i it's just never done anything for me i it, it was legal in nevada it's starting to become legal here in texas yeah for which is very surprising um and yeah i just never i've done cbd stuff but that's just just to chill yeah. out like that's that was only one time and it, all i did was just sleep so um, yeah yeah it took me forever love... to get drunk too man like there there's a different there's different kinds of drunk too like that wine drunk to me is a little bit more calming if that's for lack of a better term i like wine a lot and when mm -hmm. i have a lot of it i feel i don't feel like heavy you know it's it's a different kind of yeah experience for me yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, w yeah. Um, whiskey for me kind of gets me going, but I think I think a lot of it is just the mental associations you have with things, like the the typical tasks you're doing while you're consuming certain things. Yeah, and and that's what a lot of like, you you know, like Hamilton Morris. I don't know if you know Hamilton Morris, the f guy from um, uh, Vice and what's like Pharmacopia. He had like a TV show, I've and heard he talks about the name. He talks about that stuff a little bit where a lot of it is just kind of how you use certain substances or whatever. Yeah. Um, but like in, in the case of alcohol, it's like, I know like usually if I'm drinking whiskey, like mentally I'm on because I'm like thinking about the whiskey. I'm, you know, I might be talking about it on camera or something like that. It's yeah. like whiskey kind of keeps, it's there's like a lightness to it for me. And also you have to consume much less, which I like, Yeah. you know? Like if I'm gonna drink beer, I feel heavy, I feel bloated oh. and full, and then you yeah. feel like sort of just lazy, you know. And yeah. wine just makes me tired for whatever reason. Like I'll just drink some wine and I sit back and I just get sleepy. Yeah. So I, I don't know. It it is interesting, I, but I, yeah, I, I, all alcohol makes me tired. That's just mm -hmm. my adverse reaction to it. I guess I I have no idea why. Um, I've never been like a like an energetic drunk like the right. few times that i have been and it's like i don't know what that is it just ma it makes me all tired i'm like mm -hmm. we can we we better start you know like slow because i'm just gonna get more and more sleepy at this engagement so. <laughs> yeah i it's funny i gotta i mean i um i don't really party anymore i mean who parties in covid but even before that like i did my fair share of crazy stuff in undergrad you know for yeah. sure um but at grad school, I mean, a couple of times that I was like really like messed up, you know, uh, but that was like really kind of rare. And now in, in real life, it's in real life. It's like, I, I don't, when am I ever going to go to a party? And like, when do I want to throw back shots and feel like shit for two days at, later? Like, no, I I'm got good. I, <laughs> for one thing in grad school for me, drinking was too expensive in Vegas. So oh. in Vegas, it was like. Sometimes you're paying 
12 13 dollars for a pint of beer like oh my god <laughs> that's vegas though man and, and like look yeah. the best places to go to do that kind of stuff or is on the strip or just off the strip so yeah every once in a while you'll find a deal i mean it's not Jeez. the best anything but uh you do pay for experiences too i guess you could argue that like for me personally if i'm going to an astros game like a baseball game i don't honestly mind paying the prices there because it's all about the experience and whatever Mm -hmm. um but it's a little different when like the place you live is an attraction that's that was the strangest part about vegas it was like an adult playground like this whole city in itself besides the suburban areas obviously even so um are it is a giant tourist attraction so Mm -hmm. it's so by far the strangest city i've ever been in i think i've mentioned that before but like that that was that was the most frustrating part honestly because i'm a sports fan if i wanted to go to a knights game which is now one of the only two professional sports teams there knights game to go sit nosebleeds is like 95 bucks a ticket i said nosebleeds yeah and i was that was like a once or twice maybe occasion so brutal jeez yeah but i i don't know what so columbus has ohio state right got ohio state we got uh columbus crew soccer ah, soccer yeah and the blue jackets for hockey so i forgot about them and i i like i mean i like both going to soccer games and hockey games those are fun i like the high pace stuff like that yep yep you know Columbus um, crew yeah yellow and black yeah and they're building a new stadium too and there was all this drama about the the crew was going to move to austin the owners were trying to take them to austin yeah instead they just made a new team there yeah so um because man there was a lot of backlash in town as you can imagine trying to take the sports team away <laughs> one now, of the only the, ones the ohio state stuff's crazy man that is such a powerhouse yeah the um what did you uh what did you want to talk you said discipline what were you what were you wanting to get into yeah i'm intrigued yeah i mean you know it kind of starting to work out again and and uh and you know i did the whole keto thing a couple of months ago i did like 10 basically 10 weeks of keto and i lost like you know 15 pounds total by the end which was great right Mm. Yeah, very little, like 20, 30 grams a day of net carbs. Um, and we did that, and that was very interesting. I've never done a diet like that before. But um, starting to work out again and, and and thinking to myself, like, how am I going to stick through this? And what is going to keep me on the wagon? And I, just, I felt like the reason I chose to do, like, this series of workout videos and do Insanity was because – yeah, I needed to have a tangible goal at some point and develop the habit first so that then I can say to myself, like, I'll go to the gym and, you know, today I'll do chest and triceps and, and he, you know, maybe I'll switch it up at the gym as I'm feeling a certain way and have that freedom and that creativity to do it, you know, do what you feel like your body needs in the moment as opposed to sticking to a regimen. But for now, I needed to set myself up to have, have a disciplined goal um, because I felt like, and, and, you know, we both listen to a lot of the same podcasts and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. I, I, uh, I find myself, I, I'm like undiagnosed ADHD as much as you can get probably, <laughs> you know, like, like I, I can't finish tasks. Like, I mean, my desk behind me, you can see all the sticky notes, like on my desk, like yeah. I have to write shit down or in the notes of my phone, the minute that I get the idea or it's gone. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of people are this way, but I was talking to my fiance Sarah, and and she's like, "Oh yeah, of course you have ADHD. Come on, <laughs> you know." And I'm like, "Damn Without it, a skip of a beat, man!" Like, yeah, and 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 so I started to think about it. Like, what has kept me on track throughout the six years of school and the two years out of school, and now I'm in my the ninth year of that set of years, I guess, mm-hmm. was like the idea that I had so many ideas. And I don't mind working my ass off and like just taking like personal mental health and just putting it to the side and just working. I'm good at that. And I had all these ideas. So it was easy to get things happening and to do things. 
But to actually sit down and go task by task and accomplish something was very foreign to me. Mm. You know, so I've Sarah has been on my ass for a long time to start making schedules because I despise them because of this. Like I like to just float around. Man, this is uh, just further supporting the true fact that we are the same person. Um, <laughs> everything you just said is what I struggle. I I find it to be easier for me to start something. Uh huh. I I'll, I usually finish it, but it's the problem is is that I'm it takes me way too long to finish it, like mm -hmm. way too long for my um, I guess liking. I I. It's very it's hard to explain, but I I know for a fact that I do wish that I could finish something um, in a little bit more ample time frame. Mm. I it's one of those things of like like uh, or like solely focusing on something for me is such. It's like trying to find the eighth world wonder. It's so incredibly hard for me to just like focus on one thing for a certain amount of time. So I actually had to build schedules because um, in grad school for practice and everything, it may be a better practice or -er. it may be, yeah. a, it may be better at practicing because of the efficiency fact or whatever. But I, my teacher, Dean, he would, he would have checkbox. He would write out checkboxes like, cause he was the same way and had to like balance doing law and doing UNLV and everything else he had going on in his life. So I took that, uh, into account with uh, with grad school but for me doing it for real life when i don't let's be honest like you don't have nearly as much going on as you did in grad school because everything is just happening at mm -hmm. once so i look at that that checklist and i'm like oh i actually don't have as much to do today as i thought so that's one thing that helps me with it but it, i can't i honestly can't stand them in outside of school either for so for whatever reason i i I have no idea. It's very hard to adjust to this life, especially when you go straight through two mm -hmm. degrees. I don't know if you found that as well. but Yeah. Yeah, it's, that, that is hard. I mean, I think in school, because you're drowning in stuff to do, it's really easy. No matter which way you turn and what task you start doing at any given time, like you're making progress, so you're fine. You know, yeah. it's like... I have six papers, this many pieces. No matter what I choose in this moment, I'm it's is the right answer. Right, and it's going, it's it's chipping away. Yeah, and in like real life, you're. I mean, I do have things I need to get done, but yeah, there there are, you know, I have hours a day where I can sit and daydream about like and and, and plan and think creatively about what I'm gonna do, and those are the times that you can just screw off, you know, yeah, or, or exactly, or, or whatever. And so, I I. You know, I'm like printing out the insanity calendar, something I would never do, and checking the days off yep. because I, I I need to see that physically, that it's going away, that I'm chipping away at this. And so what I've been doing is every day I'm waking up a little bit earlier, and today I got my ass out of bed at like, I think, 740, mm -hmm. which is good. Yep. And um, the first thing I do is, is go down and work out, and I've decided that I want to get outside more like this has been a big goal of mine and now the weather's getting nicer so as soon as i get done working out i go out and walk five thousand steps oh, you know okay. and and about like how far is it almost two miles maybe okay. so it's it's not a lot but like right after the workout it's a great way to, for me to cool down because i don't like to jump in the shower after a workout immediately i hate getting out of the shower sweating still <laughs> yeah yeah you, <laughs> you know that counterproductive. That's, that's not great but yeah. so i'll go out and walk and turn on a podcast and just uh, be on the notes of my phone and just be planning things. And then get home, jump in the shower, make some food, and start my day. So I've been telling myself, if I just get those two things done, I've, I've accomplished what I need for the day now. There's this and, like yeah. underlying rule that I guess some people have said about uh, like getting a, all those things done before 10 a.m. is maybe a good, a good. Oh, that's see, that's my goal time. That's interesting. Okay, well, because if yeah. I start working at 10 a.m., I feel like I'm not losing out on my day. Because I, I mean, I, that gives me six great hours to work, one hour to take some time to myself to eat, and then it's five o'clock. And if you want to go till five o'clock, I mean, 
Right. You can get a lot of shit done in six hours, you know, if you really yeah. work. Absolutely. But, yeah, man, I've just been thinking about that. And then what all I've been also thinking in that meta way of like, okay, so I'm trying to get more disciplined now, but it requires discipline to become disciplined. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, <laughs> thinking on that extra layer of removing yourself to two levels and looking at the discipline that you are enacting to get disciplined and trying to have control over all of those things. That's, I've been thinking a lot about that. <laughs> what is that, a um, double on top? No. No, I think that's like, I don't know what you would call this, honestly. I, uh, I, but I understand exactly, like, I'm over analytical in general, but like uh -huh. thinking about what, because we mentioned these guys last week, uh, Goggins and Haynes and all, like they are disciplined in multiple facets. Mm -hmm. like they're disciplined in just in the fact that they're get up at the same jocko willink gets up at 4 30 every morning posts yeah. a picture of it on his instagram you know yeah and there's so many different sides of the argument you have maybe not so many different in 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 that sense but there's one side of the argument that's like i don't need to get up early to get what i i need to get done and then there's mm -hmm. the other side of like, no, get up early because it's all mental at this point. You're allowing yourself to um, find excuses to not get as much done and be as productive. Um, early bird gets the worm, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think I lean more towards the get up early thing. And I, I this is why. Um, there's something about the morning time when you're not, there's not as much going on. The world hasn't started yet that mm -hmm. allows you to focus a little bit more, I think. Um, I, for a little bit during quarantine, I was getting up at 5am and going, going on a run and I felt, it felt strange to already be done with a workout at by 6am. Yeah. It was very yeah. strange, but it felt, um, it felt like I had so, I felt good throughout the day and I felt like I had so much more time to get stuff done. There's something about this, like eight slash 9pm feeling, um, in my world where it feels like. I don't feel as productive or motivated. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what time I got up. Um, so there's like, I think I'm more in the sense of like, get up early to get more done. The 10 a.m. rule, like we were just talking about, which I've seen more and more of. The universe kind of works weird in that way, where like you talk about something and all of a sudden you hear, always hear mm -hmm. about it and see it and think about it, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, I the, I, I go to two different things in the morning. It's either I, I do my workout immediately and then like now I'm basically trying to like work out physically and then sort of my morning walk is for me to get right mentally for the day, you know, like that's kind of the way I'm thinking about it. And then I'm prepping myself in both aspects. And then by, yeah, by 10 a.m. I'm, I'm hitting it. But at the same time, the morning, like you're saying, when there's no distractions in the world, because what, what happens if you leave your work till 10 a.m. is then by the time you start working, the emails are coming in, people need your attention. And, and so you are going to get pulled away. And that's another thing where I'm going to start being more disciplined about not checking my email, except for certain periods of the day, you right. know, I'm going to sk schedule that in because it'll just steal your time. But at the same time, like you're saying, there's nothing going on in the morning. And I love being able to get up and let's say I need to like, cut some videos that require a little creative energy or even I mean, shit practice. I love early morning. I love creative early work. Practice, dude. It's I, it's great, but then you're like, I, I don't want to. Then I get to like noon, and I'm like, do I want to work out right now? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, cause I I love the physical feeling of like getting the workout done in the morning, and I don't like eating before I work out because I cramp yeah. up really bad. Mm -hmm. So the morning's great, but so I'm like in two camps where. I don't know if I want to screw with my schedule and try like every other day. You know, this day is a morning workout. This day's afternoon. I don't know because I love that creative time in the mornings too. I like an evening run. I will say that. I do too. An evening, an evening run, run around 6 p.m., 7 p.m., especially with the time change here and everything. Like it's it's an awesome time to run with the weather. Um, mm -hmm. But, well, well, one question I had w about your walk is that you said you had a podcast on while you mm -hmm. do that creative thinking, that mental reset. Does that – is that not more taxing to just do it without the uh, than doing it without the podcast? Because there's an author, Ryan Holiday. He wrote um, he's 
he runs the Daily Stoic, which is just mm. kind of like a newsletter community thing. And he wrote a couple books. He called a book called Ego is the Enemy, um, and a couple others. But he was talking about how it's just music during that workout and slash walk run time because he wants mm. to turn his brain off um, for a second. Maybe that's just the workout thing. But the morning, that doesn't get in the way. Like a podcast doesn't get in the way of mm. your your mental, I guess, capacity. or, or... Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I mean, only on day two right now. Because here's the deal. I've well, never ever... I've I've worked out a lot in my life, but I've never ever made time to like walk. I, yeah, you know, and part of it for me is like even if I, I'm just trying to get used to that because if I go on the road or I go do certain things, like just making it a practice f- for my own health, vit- like get the sun in my face, but also my own health of just getting out and taking steps instead of just sitting on my ass in a hotel room or something. Just making it a priority that like if. I will just go walk and making that more regular for me. But yesterday I did it where I had music on during my walk because I had a lot of planning to do. Mm-hmm. So like, I mean, I was like trying to plan the week more more or less. And then today, because I've kind of did that pre-work, I, I left a podcast on during the walk because I only had a couple things on my phone to go over right. and really think about. But like I was, be able, I was able to be more engaged with the podcast because I didn't have as much planning to do. So I think like... It'll depend on my mood, which one I choose. But yeah, that's a good piece of awareness too. Is like sometimes a podcast, I I get pissed. Like I'll leave it on in my ears, thinking I can work, and I'll start working. And after thirty five minutes, I find myself being angry, and it's because I can't focus. I'm like, oh, get these things out of my ears, you know? Exactly. And I throw them down. It's like, you know. I I mean, I I can't really work out with a podcast. Uh, I can um, run. With a podcast, I can yeah, run on a okay. treadmill at the gym. Yeah, but like when I'm outdoors, I want to be listening to something that's going to keep you know keep me going. But sometimes also outdoors, it's nice to just listen to the birds. I've I used to yeah. go through phases where I would just no music. I'd go run for six miles. You know. Yeah, I mean that's a interesting point because I I feel like there is a a sense of cloudiness that I've been um Mm. having lately and i think it's because i've been a little this is about to get real for a second a little a little down um because of everything that's going on professionally you know Mm -hmm. everything my job is falling apart because of administration administrative choices um involving cutting programs and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. uh this is the first time I felt like I have no direction, like mm-hmm. a, a, a chosen path where before the pandemic hit, I had a pretty chosen path. Like I was going to, you know, stay in Vegas and play and, and get in with the, the right circles and get better and practice and get my own space. Pandemic hits. I wind up back in Texas um, by my choice and everything that was going on here. Um, and what I've been doing lately to deal with everything that's been going on is I've just been having more screen time and more podcasts and listening to podcasts that really aren't about anything. They're just comedy podcasts. And yeah. They're not talking about anything. They're just trying to make you laugh. And so I feel this sense of cloudiness and that cloudiness mentally leads to uh, being lethargic and not getting yeah. as much done and it really weighs on you and it has a lot to do with like, well, I'm seeing all these other people have a good time with their careers and getting a lot of creative projects done. And I'm in making money, consistent money, which look, if you don't have consistent money coming in, that's a mental battle in itself. Right. Yeah. Especially at this point in the career where you're, you're having to purchase gear and, and stuff that is useful towards, what you want to do and so all of that weighing down has caused me to actually be on my phone more which is uh, one of my new year goals was to be on my phone less yeah and i was doing well at first and then everything started happening you're like dang it dude like now i'm up i'm up on the screen time so Mm -hmm. uh that's very it makes me feel very cloudy and so i'm 
I might take a break from podcasts for a bit and listen to more music because listening is something that was kind of not ruined, but it definitely changed for both for the both of us being going through two music degrees, right? You're listening mm-hmm. analytically, maybe even critically, and having to get back to that that old enjoyment, right, is mm-hmm. uh, something I've been trying to focus on. So we'll see. I, I that cloudiness definitely has been weighing on me though. Um, just not mm-hmm. thinking extremely clearly, if that makes sense. So yeah. I, I, I feel like I went through that phase too in the pandemic where I just found myself like doing nothing and just listening to podcasts because there's so much out there. Yeah. And just like my my guilty pleasure for podcasts was listening to Theo Vaughn because I think he's hilarious. Yeah, I just listened and, to him yesterday, actually. So You know, and and at least like when you listen to to Joe Rogan, you know, with certain people on there. You really feel like you're learning a lot of stuff. You're yeah. you're you're engaged, and you know some of the other guys. You're just doing it for fun. And I found myself doing so much of that. And I don't really know. I mean, I'm trying to think of kind of how I got out of it. You know, I mean, the drums and drams thing helped me a lot. Where I started, for for instance, I I started watching less podcasts. Okay, let me rewind again. I'm all over the place. No, you're good. And in 2019, I was listening to a shitload of podcasts. But I was also like on the road and doing everything. And so not a good time to be like, you know, putting your time into listening to that. And then I decided, let me make my own podcast because of that. Yeah. And then like re- more recently, it was like I last year I started watching so much whiskey tube stuff. And then I was like, why am I watching all this? Why not make my own? Right. And so that was that's always been kind of the progression. But then I did find myself before drums and drams came along just listening to so many podcasts and i i think the two ways that i feel like approaching that is either one like sit your ass down and create a plan or two just start doing just start doing whatever yeah and not listening like it's either like throw shit against the wall and see what sticks or plan out your next move yeah so, i don't know i was thinking about doing this modern snare drum competition but i i don't think i have enough time um, cause I didn't realize it was next month. I just was told about it last week. So, um, and that's a lot of lit. It's a uh, lot. It's a lot. It's like yeah. three pieces, the first round two the next round and then two of the final round, if you make it that far. Um, but you got to learn everything because yeah, what, I mean, you know, you can't just go week to week, but, uh, the, so, I mean, I actually might still just take that lit and just start learning it for fun just to get back mm-hmm. into the swing of things, right? Because all the, all the music I've been playing here hasn't been anything classical. It's been pop or, you know, mm-hmm. acoustic sets, pop percussion stuff, drum set. Um, but, you know, actually the other day I, was, I saw that Pearl is dropping all these new drums, like... Mm-hmm just insane lineup of stuff that they're dropping this year and they they usually are the kind of company that doesn't do that like they kind of don't get yeah. into that whole we got to release new products what we have is good but dude they're redoing the entire philharmonic line they're redoing they're releasing vintage drums for the first time like vintage style drums and mm-hmm. um so that's a honestly gear does kind of motivate you in a little little bit of especially if you haven't been around that kind of stuff in a while like Mm. and one of my favorite things in the entire world is concert snare drum it really is i love it love playing it love playing solos in orchestral setting whatever so i might i might get back into that maybe as kind of like a a stepping stone so Mm. what i mean do you have any shows on the horizon or any gigs or anything like that that you need to prep for like what is your do you have ideas for next moves like um in, in anything like do you have anything on the calendar um i i play i play some gigs with my dad who is a singer songwriter but uh, other than that no i there's no i think one issue i did make was i didn't tell a ton of people i was back here because mm-hmm. i didn't know how long i was gonna be back yeah and so i do have a couple things on the horizon with some other pop percussion stuff i have uh I'm part of a Tom Petty tribute band now, and then I'm uh, 
I'm also in a kind of like a high energy, big old like tower of power kind of setting, um, mm-hmm. playing perk for that. That's a lot of fun. Um, but it's all, you know, it's all feel, it's all grooves and stuff like that. <laughs> Bless you. Ooh. And they, uh, that kind of stuff is, is motivating. It's, you know, getting my hands moving on the drums at least. Mm-hmm. But there's this strange feeling. I was telling somebody this the other day about like how I missed the grind. You know what I mean? Yeah. Having all that going on those six, those 14, 16 hour days that you had, like there's mm-hmm. something about that, that felt, it almost became comfortable, which is looking back. It wasn't the healthiest time of my life, but something about that grind of like working towards, you know, something I, I thought about doing video projects, you know, um, mm-hmm. finally pulling the trigger on a nice camera and I have a decent camera, but nothing that is of the quality that I would like. And then, um, you know, getting buckling down and learning something again, it's, but like I said, this cloudiness doesn't really allow me right now to formulate a a good plan. Uh-huh. It's it's so like it's so negatively charged. It's always like, well, what what the heck's the point? And then you know, I look at somebody like you, who actually find very it's very motivating to look at yourself, who learned a concerto and you know is learning all, learned all this lit and and has stuff on the horizon like that's motivating to me because it's like he's doing it i can do it too like kind of thing Mm. like it's got it's all about a mindset for me right now it's all mental it's very strange like jordan spieth just won for the first time in four years a pga tournament Mm -hmm. and he said it was nothing to do with anything but just mentality because golf is such a mental game and i feel like drumming is such a mental once you develop the, the the physical attributes like it's such a mental game, I feel like. So, mm. or at least his career is in general, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely a mental game because nothing is, it's just, I mean, if you went into a reg, regular career field, the path is kind of charted for you. And, and and then if you want to go off off the path and try to make more money or get more prestige or start your own thing, that's great. But, you know, you just have a ladder that you're climbing the whole time. So it's like for us, yeah, it's it's mentally it's just so challenging to chart your own path. I mean, and that's kind of what I was thinking about when you were talking is yeah, having a deadline is going to help you a lot. I mean, and I'm struggling through it. Like the concerto thing, it was great that it happened, great the premiere happened, but I waited till the last minute. I didn't enjoy the process of like actually learning the notes because I was just like shitting my pants trying to figure this out. <laughs> and and then you get to the end and it's like, yeah, it was really great. And I was like, man, I I masochistically held myself back in that situation. Dude, what Just... a word. Hold on. What a word. That was <laughs> Masochist? Awesome. Masochist. Yeah, masochist, oh, like, um, you inflict pain on yourself, basically. Yeah. And, you know? And so it's like self-sadism in yeah. the non-sexual sense, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's like you, you don't want yourself to be happy. Yeah. So you find you find ways to, like hide the fact that you're fighting yourself and for me that was like i'll just wait to the last minute and and i know i'll get it done because i know i learned music fast and all this but i will literally wait until it is fight or flight in this moment Hmm. and uh and then 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 i don't enjoy the process throughout and you're just doing it to yourself so for for me for when i look at your situation it's like part of me wants to say just set a deadline for literally any anything but something that you have to be responsible to somebody else for yep and then obviously, like, don't screw that up, you know, because right. you're, then you're responsible to someone else for it. But part of me also wants to say, like, take a week and, like, rebuild and plan, like, what you want that deadline to be. But at, at the same time, speed would be really nice to just set the deadline right now, no matter what it is, and give yourself 15 days to do something or, right. you know. So I think there's different ways you can approach it depending on your own personality. Um, but I think, like... Theo Vaughn was talking to Jordan Peterson about a lot of different things on a recent podcast and just the idea that you're intentionally holding yourself back. You're you're wanting yourself to be unhappy because you're afraid of being happy because once you get happy, you have to deal with a lot more shit mentally in and of your – like then you can't mentally complain to yourself about your situation 
or worry yeah like you're happy so then you unlock things and you're like now i have to deal like for me it's like now i have to deal with my hesitance about religion and death but i don't want to deal with that shit so i'm going to just hold myself back right b- and be by miserable n- yeah. by intentionally letting myself be or like money i'm i'm terrible with money i'm mm. really bad with it and like i've made I've had really, really good months playing, and I've had really terrible months. And I always find a way to just suck with money because if I have enough money, I get more freedom. And the more freedom you get, the more choices you have to make for yourself as opposed yeah. to making them for money. There, there, I'm, I'm bad with it in, in a sense of like I'm afraid to let it go. Uh huh. Like if that makes sense. Like I, I'm a little too frugal at times where well, that's that's kind of good though i i mean yeah but like at the there's that but you got to treat the, yourself well there's a whole, <laughs> but the, yeah but i do like the i like kicks all right i, I just got these the other day reebok class all right um but uh that's like once every like six months um uh i i find myself to be we're talking about the holding yourself back thing like i honestly feel like i have the capital to purchase this equipment that i would need and mm-hmm. i just won't do it because like i'm afraid of being the broke musician i always have been and it's, are you afraid uh, of the commitment that the equipment brings yeah because like you buy the camera you're like i better use this damn camera exactly Yes. That's how I am, but but I just pull the trigger anyways because I'm shitty with money and and then being <laughs> being broke being broke. Not only is it like I better I'm use anyway. this, and, uh, I was like I better use this, but I probably maybe I won't even use it and I'll just buy it. That way I'm unhappy still and I'm broke. Dude, or I'll use it. I'll use it and it's like for something totally out of left field. Uh huh. Uh, you know what? I could get fitted for golf clubs this week, and then I'll do it, and then and I'm like after I get fitted, I'm like. I can't even buy this right now. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, but that's, a, that's also a little bit deeper. I think that's me searching for some, some kind of something mm. to be kind of searching for something else to work on that. I don't feel like I'm a failure at right. That that's really deep, but mm-hmm. while I don't feel like I'm a failure, I definitely feel like, um, there's a strange sense of like, I'm running out of time. Where like I'm only 25. Like, what are you talking about? It is a strange thing, isn't it? But yeah, yeah, like you feel like, well, uh, maybe I should get a doctorate because it it will add more to my resume. It's like, no, no, you don't need to do that. Like, you just need to. Yeah. This is where the real work begins, not school. Like, yeah, you can't just go running back to school because you feel like you're not getting enough done outside of it. You know. Mm Mm-hmm. Which that's another discussion, but yeah. And you said something a second ago, and I, I had I had something in my brain about it, and I, I lost it. You're talking about the getting fitted for golf clubs, not not buying them. But then you know, it's like I was like searching, maybe. Um, yeah. Dang, I lost it. Well, at any rate, yeah, I. Th- this th- this stuff becomes more apparent too. Well, I think it becomes more apparent for self-employed, creative people. Yeah, and you have to like chart your own path, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because like when I was in school too, I felt like I knew exactly what I wanted to, to be. And it became very easy to map everything back to that. And then if you, the moment you start second guessing it is when just like the shit hits the fan. Because you don't have like a, a, a north north star you don't have like a guiding light to like right. w- your actions you can look and, you can look to people who have done it but the path yeah. is it's still not charted like the person i looked right. up to the most was alex stopa mm-hmm. and because he was doing it like he was playing full-time but teaching lessons and and had his own studio his whole like this whole setup right his life he had a nice house like he was doing it and yet he was pretty much the only person i knew that was doing it because mm-hmm. the, the path is so hard to forge, you know? Yeah. But I would rather, you know, there are some people for whatever reason that, that can get all those things, you know, that can have what looks like a picture perfect career 
a nice house, good good money in the bank, you know, like, and they've handled their stuff seemingly. But and, and there are a lot of those people that are really unhappy. Like I would rather they're really unhappy and then they never figure that out. But I, I would almost rather go through the struggles right now that like I'm going through that you and I are talking about in the hopes that in like three to 30 years, I will reach that point, but then be like, you know what? By the time you get there, you're wise enough that you don't, you don't screw up anymore. Like you don't, yeah. you're always going to fight these battles, but you're going to get there knowing like the struggles you went through and knowing that um, you really were intentional about the way that you got there, even if it took longer. Yeah. There's some intangibles that come with that journey. Yeah. Some valuable ones. Yeah. So, but the concept of freedom with money, you know, yeah, and just holding yourself back, that's been on my head, on my mind a lot, which is why it's like, I'm going to start taking concrete steps. If I don't set the, the concrete steps for me are the same things as performance deadlines. They're performance deadlines for my life. Yeah. As, as opposed to my career. So, yeah, and, and I, I've realized like, I'm not going to go on the road and kill myself anymore. You know, when when gigs start coming back, I'm not going to go show to show to show. Like, I'll give myself days off in between, and I'll ask for more money because I have to pay for those days off to some degree. And yeah, I need to be more – like, happiness is ultimately what is better for you than anything else, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, the golf stuff makes me happy. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, like – searching for that searching for happiness within something that isn't my calling is mm -hmm. not exactly what it's supposed to be about like i understand what i'm supposed to be doing i think maybe um and it's i'm not gonna be a pro golfer like let's be mm -hmm. real here um but it's definitely a nice hobby and it makes me happy but drumming and music making and creating all this podcast everything um makes me happy it's just not as radiant right now like mm -hmm. i honestly that that's but it's there you know what i mean like mm. it, i enjoy doing it still like picking up sticks and playing on a pad is still enjoyable for me um mm -hmm. but there's a sense of like there was a sense of this in the more so in the in the middle of the pandemic where it was like, well, what's the point? Right. Mm. Like nobody even knew what, if this was going to come back, even in this amount of time. Right. Yeah. Cause we, we were all here in two to three years or whatever. And, um, I think I just needed to finally take the steps to get back to where I was. Right. And instead mm -hmm. of always like imagining myself back where I was and just finally taking concrete steps, like you're, like you're talking about. And I bet there's somebody listening to this right now who is going through the exact same mental hurdles, right? Mm -hmm. It's all a mental game for me right now. Phys like, I can... It's not like we ever lose ability to play unless something happens to you, right? Um, mm -hmm. And you'll definitely feel rusty or whatever, but... Um, yeah, it's just a mental, mental battle. It's very strange. Yeah, I'm, I think, I mean, you're talking about kind of getting back to what you used to do. I think like that's the same exact struggle. I, th I was thinking about this on my walk today, which is that I put off through the pandemic contacting presenters or orchestras or university professors where I would normally do my e kind of my email thing and, and send things to people and try to get gigs booked. I, I put that off and I think rightly so. I think if I would have been blasting those out, people would have been like, listen asshole you know like the, the world <laughs> shut down yeah but now i have to get back to doing that because the word on the street from talking to people is like hey this shit's coming back you got to get you got to get out there now it's the time yeah. and um and now there's like some ugly skeletons in my closet with all that stuff where it's like uh a lot of the music i was playing before the pandemic i didn't like i just kind of got stuck in a rut of and it's like when i come back out now I now have to like start selling myself, selling my recitals, redoing my press kit, my all on my materials very quickly to start getting them back out there. So like, for instance, like the concerto was already booked, you know, mm -hmm. it was already on the books two years ago. So I've actually done no work to get gigs moving forward, zero. 
like the Pasek's been on the calendar already. This I have another concerto in the fall that's already been on the calendar. So I'm at that same point where I'm actually kind of pushing it off myself too a little bit, unfortunately, and because I'm scared. Yeah. I'm really scared about, I'm scared about failing because it's like everybody was failing because nobody had work and now it's like I'm going to get back into the mix and I'm scared of falling on my face again. Yeah, I, guess. I mean, this is all like, nobody un- outside of this understands that this is all within ourselves. Mm-hmm. This every day, this banter, this like straight up just constant um, com- conflict. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's. I think I'm. I, I was the most confident when I felt like I had a routine of getting better every day. That morning, mm-hmm. the, like we talked about, morning practice, um, swiping that key card to get into the building at like. 6 37 a.m in grad school and getting all all my work done and that morning slot was uh dude i mean that was it was almost empowering it was like fuel yeah i was like i was like a machine and then that gets taken away from me of course i should have expected it was going to get taken away from me anyway i was about to graduate but Mm -hmm. because look in reality everybody knows this a master's program and what we do is you have to start planning for the next step after your first semester yeah (laughs) which is unreal but yes it is your 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 degree is only it's not even two years technically it's only like like uh probably 19 months 18 months maybe year and a Mm -hmm. half and so with with that i was gonna at least ride off that wave you know what i mean and I think getting back to that is very tough because it's not the same structure um, mm-hmm. of having all this going on, like I mentioned before. But I, I feel like I'm close. I'm close to a, a reset, which I'm mm-hmm. excited about. And I think if I set my, set my own deadlines when it comes to maybe a video project, uh, talking to Gene Kaczynski, about, that dude's a machine, him, yeah. both him and Tim. Yeah. You want to talk about you want to talk about some of the most hardest working dudes in the entire game? It's them, because they got professorships and they got a studio to worry about and they got their duo and they got their solo projects. Like that is uh, very very inspiring, and mm-hmm. so. Um, but I feel like I'm close. I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but whether I took this time to reset my mind and relax and chill after seven years of school. Uh, the right way or the wrong way, I at least feel like I'm coming back. So, mm-hmm. yeah, man. <sighs> it's a time of it's a time of change right now. I'm telling you, discipline. I'm Which yeah. Is, God, man, I, and I think uh, I think I think it'll click one day. It's kind of like one of those things of where something kind of clicks like you're learning a piece and you're like oh wait i know it like one of those things Mm. i think it'll click i need a very steady balance thinking about thinking about what you're talking about kind of getting back into the grind the flow i need a steady balance of um how do i put it like for instance this week for me i do have things i should do i need to do product demos for black swamp and malatech that i've been putting off for a while because I'm a little bit like uh, I'm getting in my own head about them and so I'm scared of them and so because of that then I don't want to do them and I don't want to commit um, but I'm going to do them that's that's like my number one goal for this week along with getting my exercise shit and my mental walks back like you know set up um, oh where was I going with this <sighs> dang dude <it's, laughs> I, I'm I'm Oh no, that sucks. I do get in my um, own head about that, by the way, too. Kyle, Kyle oh. Peters, go, go ahead, go ahead, don't lose it. <laughs> no, it's it's this idea of like this week I pushed everything aside and I said, I have this, is what I, have this yeah. I have this time, but at some point I have so much time this week because I haven't really set because I don't have a million deadlines. I I do have a lot of deadlines, but some of them I said I'm intentionally not worrying about them this week. Right. 
so I needed this week to focus and dial myself in. And on day two of five so far, I'm dialed in and I'm feeling really good there about go. it. But to to there, I do need those times where shit is so crazy, where you have so much pressure and so many deadlines. I need those times too, where I can prove to myself that I can maintain my workout schedule, maintain my mental health schedule, and then also do a million of these things and the pressure of those situations making me work harder. Cause like, I'm gonna get to the end of this week and, and be a little bit lazy. Yeah. Because because I had too much time this week. So, so there's like a balance of like, for me, I always feel like I need to take a lot of breaks. I have a lot of reset moments in my life, whether it's one day or one month, where I yeah. I need mental reset, and then also I need those times where I have a thousand deadlines because that's the only thing that'll get me out, get me up and going. Yeah, is to feel scared of the deadline. So, like, how do you balance that? Like, You're uh, a failure. How do, yeah, it's how do you swing from their extremes though? It's like I don't know if I have to have the extremes or if I have to find a middle path scheduled middle path i'm not I've never sure yet found it. i've never found it i've always had dreams it's, it's like, like manic it's so crazy man it's um one one friend of mine one time sat me down at in vegas and uh she was like you know like you like create problems for yourself in your in your mind like mm -hmm. i was like f tripping about this vibraphone piece i had to learn and I was like three months out from yeah. having to play it. I'm like, I don't know this by now. I should know this by now. And like, she's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you psychopath. And I, that's, but that's the extremes I'm talking about, right? Where you're, um, uh -huh. you're like creating chaos for no reason. And mm -hmm. I was so, I, that was a really big wake up call because I was like, you end up learning the piece too fast at that point. And like, and that's what I mm -hmm. did. I learned it too fast. And then, um, and, uh, I wasn't trusting my own abilities and my own work ethic and, but for no reason. Right. Mm -hmm. I had no reason to believe I wasn't going to get it done. It's almost like I didn't trust myself. I was creating mm -hmm. chaos, which is strange, strange. Again, you know, you just don't want to let yourself be happy, man. Yeah, I, I think that really comes down to that. It's like, because the minute that you learn that vi, and this is just me speaking, I'll, putting words in your mouth. But for me, it's like if I learn that vibraphone piece two months in advance, then I have to deal with the fact that then I have to go instead of getting up on stage and my goal being like play the piece and don't screw up and uh and play the notes the goal then becomes like artistry intention mm -hmm. like all those things where w the vulnerable parts of it it's vulnerable to get up there and put yourself but you know that you have the gig you know that you have to play a piece for the gig so that's not that vulnerable anymore because it, it's it, you have to do it but then mm -hmm. the vulnerable part is like it, the excuse in your mind after you play it is it going to be like oh man you know i i was really crunched for time for learning this piece so like uh I didn't quite get all the notes or is it going to be like my artistry sucked yeah like you know the different things you deal with so i think for me it's like it's almost safer to just be like well i didn't quite have enough time so the piece just didn't come out and not even think about the musicianship yeah yeah you you're know? just like up there trying to trying to build something as you're performing it which something should have already been built maybe you're just finding the best like for me it's like finding the best excuse for myself after the fact because it's, it's never going to be good enough right. whether or not it's yeah. a notes issue or a musicality issue nobody's so, had a perfect performance ever so so if if it's never going to be good enough it's like what excuse am i going to allow myself to make based on my preparation yeah so for me it's like yeah I'd rather just have a shitload of notes to learn and get up there and just just get through the performance and then my excuse is well I just I was just crammed I was crammed for time. Yeah. It's it's I don't know it's silly. It's so silly what yeah, we do ridiculous. to ourselves. Created artificial chaos. Like it's it, Yeah. I, it's the only way I can really put a name to it. So God, life is so it's so about excuses, man. It is. For yourself or for others or whatever and Yeah. And uh, well, I'm with so you too, though on this on this project. I have to do one for innovative, um, and 
I'm like, oh, I don't have the right gear, all this kind of stuff, and I'm just making excuses, like we're talking mm-hmm. about. Then I talked to Kyle Peters a month or so ago on the podcast, and he's like, oh, I just do all my, I do all my instructional videos on my iPhone. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, yeah. dude. What iPhone do you have? I'm like, twelve. And he's like, dude, you can shoot in 1080 and 30 frames or 60 frames or whatever. You have so many options. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay. And then, like you talk to somebody like that, who I don't know him as well as you do, but it seems mm-hmm. like he's got every you know he's doesn't he's controlled like he gets his stuff done without Mm -hmm. too many excuses so you talk to somebody like that and your whole mindset kind of shifts and you're like maybe i'm creating these problems for myself yeah (laughs) yeah so yeah yeah my 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 new one has been like oh like you know in school you have to reset you have to reset rooms you have to do 45 minutes of setup for your multi-solo and everything and now it's like all my shit is literally in my basement Mm. and my thing now is like i don't want to have to reset my basement (laughs) like dude it is so relative yeah problems are so real like when you hear rich people complain about something you just want to put your middle finger in their face but problems are just so relative you know so anyways we should wrap this up though (laughs) i'm getting i'm getting texted from my fiance so anyways (laughs) well uh uh, i thought this was this was really good I, yeah me too man yeah that was awesome um yeah the i hope you've been enjoying the first two episodes of the offstage series um i know i am so today we talked about artificial chaos and discipline and <laughs> a bunch of different stuff and you know what i think at the end of the day i think all of us in our community are dealing with some form or fashion of this and some are dealing with it better than others. So, um, yeah, you can follow the Rudenville Podcast on all major platforms. Subscribe, rate, review. Uh, you heard the ad about the support link in the description below. And you can follow all of Cameron's stuff on his socials, Sealage Music, me, Hartwell Drums, uh, hartwelldrums.com, sealagemusic.com, all the good stuff. You know where to find us. And yeah, man, any closing words? Nothing. Great. Let's do it again. Yeah, man. (laughs) We're doing it again. All right. That's it for this one.